Okay, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Niki Athanasopoul. I work for uh, the dissemination office of the IFM. The IFM is part of the engineering department at Cambridge. And they have their own, um, if you want, the practitioner side. That uh, our, our whole remit is to go out and work with companies of any size to help them implement uh, improvements uh, and sustainability is part of that. So over the past uh, three years, we have been running a program, I'll explain a little bit later on, called PRISMS. And with that, we went out in the east of England and worked with about 120 companies. So my talk today is not so much about any theories or any academic research, but it's actually the, the real data and what we achieved with a small percentage of these companies. But before I start, I just want to thank the team. So we are about 10 people working full, well, more or less full time for three years in the program. Five people actively going out and working with uh, companies and uh, five people on the bottom of the slide that uh, really managed all the tool development and the methodologies we used and also managed the program, which um, I think Steve will agree when you deal with public funding is, is an onerous task. It's not quite an easy thing. So what is PRISMS? Uh, PRISMS was uh, funded by ERDF and ERDF stands for the European Regional Development Fund. So basically money came from Europe to the local government in the east of England and then we applied for some funding and we got some funding to help 120 companies. All of these companies were SMEs and SMEs is small businesses of the order of less than 250 people and normally less than 40 million revenues. And if you take a snapshot of the companies we typically helped were about 20 to 40 people they used to employ in of the order of two to six million, let's say, on revenue. So, so quite the small size. And our whole program was designed around how to give these companies access to the latest thinking, especially industrial sustainability. And that might be sound trivial for uh, the people in the audience that deal or are accustomed to deal with big companies or work for large companies. Small businesses tend to be very, most of them, family owned. Uh, people organically move up the, the hierarchy. So you might be working, start working in the business and then someone else sort of, your father or your mother sort of retire and then you take over the business. So the management expertise, if you want, tend to be organically grown within the business. And these companies have a problem of how to access what is best practice. Sometimes the practices they follow they are pinned in the past, so they're maybe 10 or 20 years um, behind. Not all of them, obviously, that's a gross exaggeration, but this is a typical picture when you work with small businesses. So the idea is how we give access to these small businesses, to industrial sustainability, how we make them understand how to design better products and how to operate in more uh, green and efficient ways. And we're trying, we were quite ambitious when we designed the program. We were trying to do all of these things without actually uh, reducing the revenues, so without actually getting them to lose any market share or making any people redundant. I mean, in some sense, it's not easier, but it's easy to automate, let's say, certain processes or increase capacity, but we wanted them to think about the environmental impact of what they're doing in the business. And all of that, before, when we're designing the program, we work very closely with Steve's group, and also we based the design of the whole, um, the whole program on previous experience. We had worked for the past 12 years for over a thousand companies in the UK overall. So we had a bit of knowledge on what SMEs look and how we can look um, for and how we could approach them. And we're trying to help them um, along the way. I suppose the question is why SMEs? We could go and work with five multinationals and get maybe the, the benefits that we'll get with 50 SMEs or manufacturing SMEs. Well, there are a lot of them to start with. Um, these are some data from 2008 or 2009. I think about a quarter of a million in the UK alone of manufacturing SMEs. And if we go to the east of England, where we are now, there are about 25, uh, 27,000 manufacturing SMEs in the region. So it's a significant number of companies um, having some industrial activity and providing employment. So roughly speaking, it's about 100,000 
jobs in East of England alone from the manufacturing SMEs and of the order of 15 billion in revenues generated. So it's significant for, for the local economy, it's not um, a small number. And what we found often with, with these small businesses is that they really don't know where to start with. They hear the term sustainability, they don't know what it means. They're completely bewildered with the whole thing. Very often they get a lot of pressure from their suppliers, especially uh, from the customers. Especially if their customer is a big multinational, they say, okay, you're not sustainable. Give me the traceability, how you get your raw material in, how you manufacture, what is sort of um, the, the green credentials of your product. And they really don't know where to start, uh, the majority of them. And what normally they do, if they don't know what to do, is to do nothing. So they sit there and wait for, okay, maybe the legislation with, uh, will change, uh, maybe our big customers will tell us what to do, or they wait for the government to solve the problem. And what they don't realize very often is that for, they can improve with very small steps, so of the order of three to four percent a year, but if they do it consistently over a period of time, the, the results are great. They're almost as much as a big multinational working on that, and the, the impact to the environment is quite high. So it's, it's a matter of convincing them that this is beneficial to their business. And how, how we approach the whole thing is to uh, take them to the first step. So the funding we got from ERDF was very useful because it allows us to give them the first step on their trip to sustainability free. And the first step was to do the energy resource monitoring. So we uh, linked forces with a specialized consultancy company, Ecopea, and we asked them to help the companies just literally measure how much energy they use, predominantly electricity. Most of them had not even heard the term uh, resource monitoring. Um, they had no skills to do it themselves. They had not even the equipment, or they didn't know how to source the equipment to measure what they use. And the most important thing, they didn't realize it was actually cost saving on that. They thought, okay, we'll just use electricity. We, if we run the same on the same capacity, we're going to use the same amount of electricity, for example. Why we should really bother at all, you know, going through this, this exercise? I leave it for you to read. This is a typical response. One of uh, the companies we work with, they said, even if you told me, give me 5,000 pounds and I'll save you 10,000 pounds, he was not interested. He was not interested even to consider uh, putting some uh, resource monitoring to, into his factory. And this, his, he was not alone. He was a typical response. We're getting that over and over again. And that was the reason that we thought, okay, if this fully funded the first step, then we'll see how these companies progress. So we worked overall, over the three-year period, uh, for the energy monitoring alone, we worked for about 20 companies. And 17 of those, we just did the electricity monitoring, so we just lit literally check how much they use in the big uh, machines. The company selected because they had a lot of uh, capital equipment, let's say, in the factory to start with. And three of those, uh, had both electricity and gas measured um, and controlled. And the companies were varied. There were a lot of uh, small CNC machining shops, uh, uh, metal machining shops. We had uh, polymer producers. Uh, we had uh, companies that do uh, upholstery and furnishings, uh, furnish, um, office furniture, all sorts. So about 20 companies scattered throughout East of England. And there were about 240, uh, sorry, 420 uh, electrical assets measured over this three-year period. The total savings from these companies was about 200,000. So, okay, that's, that maybe sound very small for, for a large company, but it's quite significant. So, in essence, we spent, let's say, on average 5,000 pounds from the public funds from, for each company, and each company got back 10,000 in the first year. So they already covered the initial expenditure, and that was an annual saving, so the savings will be accumulating over, over time. And if you put it in uh, carbon uh, tonnage, saved it was over a thousand tons uh, of carbon reduced in the environment. 
So this sounds good, but I think what surprised us is what happened after. So these companies, we do the assessment, we paid for the initial step for them, and then we left them and went back after a few months to see how they're doing. Have they continued? Have they changed their practices? What is going on? And it was very interesting that most of them actually carried on working. They saw the benefit, and most of them, for example, changed their lighting. They went for LED lighting, and uh, they realized that both the working environment is better, uh, and this saves them money. One installed PV panels. Uh, the other one is um, actually the company that the MD said that was not interested. Now he's looking for an investment of a quarter of a million to change the um, heating system, the power heating system in the company uh, to replace it with something uh, more modern. Some change their insulation. And quite a lot of them have actually changed literally their daily practices. So switching off the lights, switching off the machines were not used, or using uh, greener practices overall. So that's quite surprising for us because they, they carry on, they saw the benefit. And then without our assistance, they carry on uh, implementing additional steps. And this particular company's photobabrication is a small case study. Um, it's based very near Cambridge, and they, what they do is uh, metal etching. So companies that want, let's say, an intricate, it shows on the top uh, corner, they are intricate uh, metal sheets, you know, carved uh, with uh, various designs for all sorts of applications. They uh, use chemical baths, and they etch it in uh, the particular sort of configuration that the customer wants. And they can do from one-off to very small batches. So you couldn't get any more environmentally, um, environmental company than, you know, uh, than this one. And what they used to do is have these big water baths that uh, they used to heat a lot of water, uh, typically on Sunday, or sometimes they left the water baths running all weekend. So they are ready for Monday morning. And this water used to circulate in the production process and uh, heat the, um, the machinery they used, you know, to do the, the metal etching. And just by realizing that actually over the weekend, by operating these machines, the, the factory was finishing on Friday, by operating these machines at the weekend, they could, uh, they wasted 30,000 pounds on electricity alone uh, over, over the year. So they stopped that practice. And they went a, fer a step further, they thought, why do we need a, hot, a circulating hot water in the factory? So they created uh, localized heaters in the process. So they actually heat on the spot when they need. And then it's self-sustaining because it's an exothermic um, uh, process. So the heat generated from the process maintains the production process going on. So this used to be um, loved by the environmental agency, in, in essence, because it was so environmentally unfriendly, uh, the company. And now it's held as a premium example by the agency in, in the region. And they have cut the power for consumption they use without actually affecting the employer figures or the production output. So they have maintained the production output, but also reduce the energy they use per sheet etched by 33%. And they see the value now, so they have gone completely the other way. Uh, they consider, they realize that there's a lot of input and better practices to be implemented, and they continue to, to uh, use the sustainability uh, knowledge, you know, to, to improve their factory. And I leave that to say now, this is unprompted responses after the three years from some of these 20 companies we work with. The important thing, I think, I will not read all of them. <coughs> this is what MDs say now about the program and their access sustainability. The important thing I have highlighted a few things there is that it's really a mindset changing. <coughs> it's not something that they consider alien to them or um, they don't know what to do with it but they realize that they have changed their minds and how they operate within the factory. And it's a sustainable thing. They can carry on doing it without any support or public funding from us. So that's the end of my talk. I took, wish you through very quickly.